G'day, Grassroots Coaches. Chris King here, and this is the Coaching Kids Soccer po- Podcast, so welcome aboard. Now, today I'm going to give you a few tips from my book, 50 Tips on How to Coach a Kids Soccer Team, and this is aimed at three to six-year-olds, so um, yeah, really young toddlers and those those players that are just in their first or second years of playing um, football or soccer. Okay, so um, yeah, here are a couple of um, my go-to tips Okay, now, first one, if you haven't coached football, soccer before, um, a great thing is to do is to get my books. But apart from that, is to head along and shadow an experienced coach. Okay, so just go along to training, and if there's a coach that have got a team similar, even if it's older or the same age, if you can just tag along with them, just ask them, say, can I shadow you for this session? And just hear how they talk to the kids um, how they set up their drills, uh, just how they interact with the kids and things like that. And it'll go, it'll speed the process of you learning up um, really, really quickly. Okay, so that's a um, great bit of advice and other coaches are always happy to help out. So instead of you stumbling away and feeling, oh, look, the, the pressure's all on me and I have to come up with magical drills and I have to be the best coach in the world, just go along Um, stay an hour after training or get there an hour early and um, hang around with another coach and just see what they do. So if they've been there for a year or two or five or ten years, they're going to know so much and you can just pick up the basics of how they interact and how they set up drills. Okay, so that's one tip. Uh, The other tip that I've got is tip 17 from my book is no laps, lines or lectures at training. So you don't, you'll hear me constantly talking about having the ball at the kids' feet as much as possible, and that's so they can get a lot of touches. So if kids are doing laps, they haven't got the ball at the feet. If kids are waiting in line, they haven't got the ball at the feet or they're not practicing a shot on goal. And if you're there yabbering away for five or ten minutes in between each drill, the players aren't kicking a ball, the players aren't passing, players aren't playing a game. So just keep that in the back of your mind. No laps, no lines, and no lectures. And that will get the maximum amount of time for the kids to do what they come to soccer training for, and that's to play soccer, improve their skills. All right, so I know we all like the sound of our own voice sometimes, but if it can be said in 15 seconds instead of two minutes, say it in 15 seconds. All right, and um, yeah, you'll find that all my drills are really focused on having, if possible, no lines. Sometimes it's unavoidable when you might have two or three players, but that's just so that the other players can have a rest and things like that. But you don't want a line of uh, 10 kids all waiting to have a kick, okay, all ready to have a, line, um, a shot on goal. Um, and let's give you one more here. Okay, what have we got? Social skills. Um, now... Like I just said, kids come to football training to, to play football and get some energy out and enjoy themselves. And um, But they always also come to be with their friends. They enjoy themselves. And this goes through every age, not just three to six-year-olds. This is this is why I still play football, to go along, have a laugh, um, take the mick out of each other. All right, so always mix it up. Sometimes the kids will go to their best mate and that, but always, if you can, mix it up, put them in with another another person so that they can learn to interact with different people, with um, kids that they mightn't have met before. All right, so part them, part them, part, partner them up with different players. All right, and also just teach them how to cooperate, um, getting balls as well. So make sure that everyone's chipping in. If the balls are all going here, there, and everywhere, every couple of minutes, stop and say, right. Everyone go and collect the balls, and also after training, if they can pack up the cones, even if it's just a simple thing, just getting a couple of cones, bringing them back to you. All right, um, Johnny and Mary, go get all the red cones. Um, Barry and Larry, go and get all the green cones, bring them back to me. All right, things like that. It just sets them up for, for later on in life. It's just uh, sub, subconsciously they're, they're doing a little bit of work, and also teach them how to be good winners and losers. All right, so you can't win every game. All right, so... Just um, tell them to shake hands, you know, congratulate each other and not to get down on themselves, things like that. So that's just a few tips to keep in mind. So we'll just run through those again. Uh, First thing was to shadow an experienced coach. And the next one was no laps, no lines and no lectures at training. And the other thing is focus on kids' social skills along with their football skills at training. All right, I hope you got some valuable information out of this. And that's from my book that's available on Amazon. It's called 50 Tips on How to Coach a Children's Soccer Team. 
And you'll also find some other books on there as well, Coaching Kids Soccer, Volumes 1, 2, 3. I've got a book out for uh, Christmas, Kicking It With Santa, 20 fun uh, Christmas-themed drills as well. So that's a fun one. Um, and if you keep, if you coach senior players as well, I'd highly recommend Training Sessions for Soccer Coaches, Volume 1. Okay, so anything 16 to 18-year-olds and above, that one's a really good introduction to coaching senior football as well. So, yeah, thanks for listening, and um, hopefully you'll tune in next time. Okay, bye for now.